Welcome to another tech video. Today we're going to be having a look at a, a TP-Link access point. So this is the, um, it's a AC1200, 5 gigahertz, so Wi-Fi 5 um, device. It can run off PoE and we're going to be showing you the basic setup today. All right, so let's get this uh, unboxed. You can see the design of it. It's uh, much better than the the old ones they used to have. Okay, this is uh, good, what I wanted to see. So inside we've got our power adapter. We've got our PoE adapter as well, which is which is really nice. So we're gonna, we'll make use of that. And then in here we've got the device itself and network cable so this one's got four antennas and looking at the design of it it looks like the new um, design TP link stuff which is great um, so the aerials in their normal format are this but obviously these can be rotated around into any position that you want but um, yeah, looks like it should have good coverage. So let's do the initial installation. So I'm actually going to use the power injector um, because effectively this means that you can just power the unit with a single uh, ethernet cable. So to set this up, we're going to take the power lead, plug that in. Now this uh, PoE injector, this can be, um, you know, you could put this in a data center literally 80 meters away and run a cable all the way up to the access point so um, it means that you don't need to have power where you're going to be wanting to mount the access point you just need to run a network cable up there so let's get that plugged in so we've got um, two ports on here one says poe and one says lan so we're going to connect a cable from our lan into the port that says LAN like that and then the other port is marked as PoE so that's the one that's doing the power over Ethernet through to the unit itself let's get this uh, additional network cable untangled so that plugs into the Ethernet port on the back of the unit so just while we're here on the back of the unit we've got our power input, our on off switch, we've got a reset switch and a WPS button. So the WPS button allows you to join devices without having to enter a username and password. Okay, so we're gonna take the other end and this is gonna plug into our PoE port and hopefully, if all is well, we should see some lights come on, which we do. So you've gotta turn, turn the unit on but we're now taking power from our power injector into the device itself. And as you can see here, the lights just starting to start up. Should have a flashing green power light. Yep, that's now booting up. Okay, so inside the box as well, while this is starting up, we've got our quick installation guide fairly comprehensive lots of different um, mechanisms for connecting it or different access modes so first thing we're going to do is we're now going to go and have a look at the setup all right so the first thing you want to do is find your device on the network and I've used angry IP scanner done a search of the network and I can see that um, the device is running on 192.168.10.176 so we want to open up a web browser. And connect to the device. And the first thing we're going to have to do is to change the password. So we're going to give it a new password and then we can get started. All right, so the first thing it asks you is how you want to set the device up. So. Um, Access point mode is the default, so uh, you just treat your device like a, a wireless access point and your devices will connect to it. 
Um, if you want to set it up as a range extender, so this is um, something that's broadcasting from your router um, to join the access point, which then boosts the signal further in your building. Um, if you want to set it up as client mode, so this is like a bridge mode, so um, as it shows here, um, you connect your device such as an Xbox or TV into the, um, the, the LAN port on the access point and then you join the access point to your, um, your existing Wi-Fi access point and basically um, it creates a network bridge to extend your network. And then if you want to use multiple SSIDs, so in other words, if you've got lots of different VLANs, um, then you've got the ability to do this. But what we're going to be talking about today is the access point mode. So we're going to select access point mode. And we're going to make sure our time zone is correct. And then we're going to use Smart Connect. So Smart Connect, what this does, this will join your 2.4 gigahertz and your 5 gigahertz networks together um, so it becomes a single SSID um, so this is also known as band steering so when you select this you can see that you just get the one network and um, what this does is if you've got a strong enough signal it will join you to the 5 gigahertz network but if your signal is slightly weaker i.e. you're further away than um, the capability of the access point it'll join you to 2.4 gigahertz and this is useful for things like older printers for instance that will want to connect to a 2.4 gigahertz network and your um, newer devices if they're in range such as iPhones etc um, will connect to the the 5 gigahertz network. So we're going to leave the uh, SSID and the passphrase as standard while we're testing this or while we're setting this up. Um, there's no other reason for it but you can set whatever you want to here and then also you'll notice you've got the hide SSID option which will, um, it will not show your SSID um, in your network settings. However, you can still connect to it via um, connecting to what's called a hidden uh, Wi-Fi network and then it will ask you for a, for you to input the details. But we're going to click on next and as you can see here we create one, um, one network name across both bands and we're going to click on next and that's going to apply those settings. Okay so once that's done we can then go back to our device Right, so this is our connection now, it's all set up. Um, we can see that we're picking up a dynamic IP um, from our router obviously, because we're in access point mode. Um, let's go to internet and confirm the details here, as you can see. So um, what I wanna do is just to click on the DHCP server. So this gives you the ability to use a completely different um, network from your router if you really want to. Um, because the way that we've got it as associated with our um, router, i.e. we're running in access point mode, then uh, this option will be disabled for you. However, um, choosing different options uh, for connectivity will will enable this so that you can specify your own DHCP server if you if you want to um, and then also whether you want to have access control so um, whether you want to list um, devices that you want to connect to your system or whether you want to block devices that you want to um, you don't want to join your access point we're going to leave that disabled and then we're going to move on to wireless where we can set our security options so by default, um, you can see here we're using WPA2 PSK, um, which is a pre-shared key, and AES is the stronger encryption, so you always want to use AES. However, we should be able to do WPA3 on this device, which is what we want to do. So we're going to select WPA3 Personal and WPA2 PSK. And the reason that you want to select this is because older devices, such as printers, um, will not be capable of doing WPA3. However, uh, much newer devices, it's the new standard, so you want to make sure that you can give your devices the option to join WPA3 personal wherever possible. So we're going to select that option, and then we're going to save that. And that's now saved. <clears throat> 
The next option under here is portal. So whether you want your users to, um, when they're accessing your access point, whether you want them just to confirm some terms and conditions, things like that. So to enable it, you just switch on your portal and you can select which band you want to do, um, to do this with. So um, devices connecting to the five gigahertz network, for instance, you've got the ability to do that and you can select, you can select that. So that, this will mean that whenever someone joins your five gigahertz network, they will see a portal where they, you need to confirm terms and conditions. And if you want to give it some uh, simple password for your, I don't know, could be guests on your network, for instance, then you can put a password in here. We're going to leave all of this disabled for now. And also how often you want, when you want the, um, <clears throat> when you want the, authentication to be uh, timed out. In other words, um, if a user is sat on your network for more than two hours in this instance, then they will need to re-authenticate again. If you want to redirect this off to your own branded page, then you can click on redirect here, and then you can give them a redirection to um, your own branded page. But by default, your branded um, portal will um, you'll see the TP link logo in it. And I'll show you that by unclicking that we can click on click to edit. And as you can see here, this is what they're going to see. Um, if you haven't selected password, then obviously they're not going to see a password field here. They're just going to click a, a login button. You can change the colors of the button, but you can't change the um, colors of the background. So if you want to have a fully branded page, you would use that redirect option. Um, and if you've got terms of use, you can click on that and you can then specify um, what your terms of use are in here. So we're going to click on cancel for that because we're not going to be using that. We're going to disable it. Uh, WPS is the usual standard WPS um, system. So if you want to join devices to your access point, then you can hit the WPS button on the back of the access point. Um, and hit the WPS button on your device, and then that will automatically connect. We're not going to be using that, so we're going to disable that. And then under additional settings, these are the, um, the power settings. You don't really need to change this. Um, <clears throat> this is useful for things like um, um, being able to say what the threshold is of the signal. This is particularly useful if, you, if you're using that band steering option. And then wireless statistics just shows you what clients are connected, how they're connected, and the data that is transferring between them. And then the throughput monitor gives you the ability to see how much throughput you're getting on each of your channels. So this is the receive channel, the transmit channel on the 2.4 gigahertz network, and then the receive channel and the transmit channel on the five gigahertz network. Next option that we wanna to go to is our system. And again, this gives you the ability to change modes at any time. <clears throat> We're just gonna step down through this. Um, if you've got an account with uh, TP, link then you can create your details here and this will as it says here give you the ability to manage your network via the tether app and more um, we're going to go into our firmware upgrade so if you want to upgrade the firmware all you need to do is come into your system settings go to the firmware upgrade and then check for upgrades and this will tell us whether there's any um, firmware update available in our instance there isn't um, but if there is uh, it will tell you the option, uh, what version is available for your system here. Backup and restore. So this gives you the ability to back up your configuration file of your access point and then restore it as well. So if, for instance, um, you've got a highly complex configuration, you want to take a backup of that configuration because if your Wi-Fi access point ever goes pop and you replace it, then you've got the ability to restore your configuration um, from a file. And then the option down here, factory restore, self-explanatory, whether you want to restore um, everything apart from your login and cloud information, or if you want to factory restore the whole device, you can do that here. 
administration settings. Um, again, change your password if you want to. Uh, access and manage the access point from local network devices. So local managers, you're gonna say, um, you can access the Wi-Fi access point from any device on your network. However, if, um, if you have a specific device with a fixed IP address or MAC address in this instance, then you can specify what that address is here, and that will then only allow um, that device to connect to the configuration area on this device. <clears throat> and then down here, you've got some um, cross-site um, cross scripting protection. Um, so you've got the ability to here to um, stop those type of attacks. So we'll leave that enabled. System log, as it says, self-explanatory. If you want to clear the log, you can do that here. If you're uh, having problems with users connecting, clear the log first and then get them to connect and all the details will be listed in your uh, system log. And then the diagnostics ping, um, you've got ping and trace route available. So again, if you're having trouble um, connecting to some devices, then you've got the ability to do some basic diagnostics using this device. Time and language, self-explanatory. It picks up the current time from the internet. Um, and again, you can change whichever servers you want here. Um, so if you want to use different NTP servers, then you can do that in this area here. And then if you want to um, have daylight, daylight saving time, so in the UK or, or, or in some of the European countries, they still use daylight saving, um, then you can enable that option here. And it picks up based on what your time zone is, what your um, times for um, the daylight saving time changes are. So we're going to leave that switched off. <clears throat> then if you want to enable a reboot or schedule a reboot, you can do that here. And then if you want to control the LEDs on the device itself, um, and if you want to switch the LEDs off in the night, you can do that here as well. SNMP, this is integration for um, an SMP, SNMP server. So you, um, you can dump out the logs to uh, an SNMP um, system, or you will also be able to query the device from an SNMP um, device as well. <clears throat> and then ping devices here if you want to uh, continuously ping a device um, and then if it fails to reach uh, that device then it's as it says here automatically reboot um, the access point if it fails to get a response back from a specific server on your network obviously you need to change the IP address to whatever it is on your network that is um, being pinged so we're going to leave that disabled. And that is pretty much it. So we're going to quit out of that now. And there we go. So if you found that video useful, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just want to say thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.